Okay, so I want to do another quick video. This one's going to be on application of Boolean algebra and more discussing the idea of logic gates, which is going to be the discussion to build like hardware or at least the logic behind the hardware. So let's just take a look real quick and get into it. So, gates and circuits. Boolean algebra is used to describe and design circuits used in electronic devices. And you might know pretty frequently about different types of circuits, different types of electrical gates and stuff like that. So basically, the gist behind everything you see on a PCB can be boiled down to Boolean algebra, as long as it's using traditional circuitry and we're not getting into stuff like, say, uh, quantum computing and uh, more nuanced stuff like that. But if it's just traditional basic circuitry, everything can be boiled down to Boolean algebra through the use of destructive normal form. So technically, if we wanted to, we could take even the most complex system you could possibly think of and break that down to a string of a ridiculous amount of NAND gates because NAND gates are, as we discussed already, function complete. So since any Boolean expression can be created using destructive normal form, we know that we should be able to essentially reduce any complex circuitry down to a string of NAND gates. Now, is that feasible or even practical? No, more so the opposite. You want to take a bunch of NAND gates, at least the idea of NAND gates and destructive normal form and build complexity from there. So that's kind of what we do. Now, here we have our three basic gates, which is the AND gate, OR gate. This is an inverter. You can also view it as a NOT gate. Make it all caps to match the others. And you might be thinking, why do we care about these three? Well, destructive normal form, conjunctive normal form. We have function complete set here with AND or NOT, which gives us multiplication, addition, and negation. So, we can create anything using these three. Now, there are two different types of circuits that we can look at. One is going to be combinational circuitry, which is essentially just, well, as the name says, a combination of different inputs, passed through some Boolean logic, resulting in some output. So if we take a look here, we have x1, x2, x3, x1 is 0, x2 is 1, and x3 is 0. We pass a 0 into this inverter, it becomes a 1, passed into our AND gate here. We have an OR gate here, another AND gate right here. So one is being passed in here, we already got that. One gets passed directly into here. Um, we have this X3 is a zero being passed into here. And then if we take a look at the output of this inverter or the NOT gate, you can see it branches at this point right here. So it's going to travel down and it's going to arc or jump over this wire here and travel into the top input of this OR gate. So one ended with one, one, one ORed with zero is one. Both of those go into the AND gate. We AND one and one together and we get one. So that's not too bad. It's just basically a combination of different Boolean inputs, going through some logic gates and having some result. Pretty much it. We get to non-combinational circuits or also known as sequential circuits, then things deviate a little bit. Not bad. This is not the best example, but I'll do my best to explain it. We have, again, some inputs, x1, x2. x1 is one, x2 is zero. We have an AND gate here. We have an OR gate over here. One difference you might note is we have this wire being passed back as the input to this gate right here. So we have one being passed in here. We have zero being passed in here. And then, well, how does this work? Well, we're going to assume, I know it's not really a generally good idea just making assumptions in general, but let's just assume that the output of this AND gate is one. Okay, 
So that's going to give us an input of 1 to or with a 0. This is 1 as an output. This gets passed as a 1 input to here. So now we and 1 and 1. And essentially we've created the idea of a loop. So this is what's known as sequential logic. It's whenever you have outputs of your Boolean logic being passed back as the input, and it kind of gives you the sense of time. So in actual hardware, you'd have some crystal oscillators or something to generate a clock that would cause the outputs of the gate to cycle back into the inputs. And we have some idea of keeping track of time. Now we wouldn't do it with something like an AND gate usually. I'm not gonna get into semantics here because it's gonna go beyond the scope of this, but essentially you're creating some form of a loop. So one other thing that we can do is we can take these schematics and we can generate Boolean expressions from them. So if we look, we have inputs of x1, x2, x3, and we're not gonna actually plug in any values right now. What we wanna do is analyze how these inputs are passed through and generate the appropriate Boolean expression. So we have some function of x1, x2, x3 should give us the gated x1 times x2 times negated x1 plus x3. So we see we have x1 and it gets negated off its not gate. So that's where we get the negated part here. We end it with x2, which gives us this part. Then we pass that x1 down here, giving us the negated x1 down here, along with x3. So we have x1 or with x3, and that gives us this part here. These are being anded, so they get multiplied. So we end up with negated x1 anded with x2, anded with negated x1 or with x3. So this gives us an actual written out Boolean expression that we can plug into an input output table that we got strictly just from some circuit schematic. So take a look here. Let's do, let's do X, Y, Z. Okay. So we have X being passed into here. That's the only place it goes. Y gets passed into here and here and also here. Z will only get passed into here. Oops. And here. Now we have X and with Y. We have X or, oh no, that's Y or with Z. And then Z and it with Y. Oh, this is an or, my bad. Now we have the inputs to this AND gate. Well, I guess we can just go ahead and plug this in right here. So that's Y plus Z. Z times Y. Uh, and we AND those together. So we end up with Y plus Z times the Y. And overall, we're going to or those together, so we will end up x, y plus y plus z, z, y. They so solve this part individually, which is going to be this AND gate, and then we solve all of this kind of in its own block here using the parentheses. So we could simplify this down, but I think this gets a general gist of how we can strike Boolean expressions, but we could reformat that into disjunctive normal form if we wanted to. I'm not gonna do that right now, but ideally you can plug this into some input output table and see all the different results you can get based on altering our inputs of X, Y, and Z over here. So, since we know that NAND and NOR are both function complete, we shouldn't be able to create any possible Boolean expression using just those gates. So let's do that real quick. Here, we want to make not and and or, because those will give us the set of operations that we know to be function complete because we can create disjunctive and conjunctive normal forms with it. So using NAND, let's create not. 
So we have some input that will branch off into the two inputs of a NAND gate. So let's say we pass in zero. Zero. NAND with zero. And one. Oh, okay. I have one other option. One. One NAND with one. Is zero. And if we look at an input output table, that gives us a functionally equivalent setup to a basic NOT gate. So if we take a NAND gate, tie the inputs to a single one, all of a sudden we have a NOT gate. All right, so we have negation. That's marked out of the way, not too bad. And let's take a look here. So we have a NAND gate to work with, and we have the previous NOT gate that we just made because we know that we can make this NOT gate using a NAND gate. So, just right off the bat, I'm not even gonna go through the actual, I'm gonna do a one, zero and one. Uh, zero, NAND with one, uh, it's gonna be zero and then one, one goes in here, gets negated, gives us zero. So zero times one would be zero, or real quick, as we have a inverter here, and an inverter here, this inverter in the NAND gate is the negation aspect, so we can just cancel them out, and all of a sudden, we have the idea of an AND gate, and the NOT gets cancelled out, so this is a double involution law, leaving us with just a simple AND. So, that's not too bad. So now we have negation from the NOT gate, and now we have multiplication from our AND gate. So let's create more. And just like we use the double involution law to create AND, let's try using De Morgan's law to create OR. Let's do one example. Uh, one and zero. Get this, we get zero. To get this, we get one. One NANDed with zero is going to be one. So let's take a closer look at what's happening here. Let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. And then let's take a look. So we have a gate inputs into a NAND gate. All right. Let's view this as X. This is Y. X and Y. So we have negated X, NANDed, and negated Y. Well, we know that NAND is just multiplication and then negation of those results. So, if we apply to Morgan's law here, then the actual negation is going to be applied to each individual aspect, giving us x, and then invert the sign plus y. And let's check what we have. A better way to kind of look at that here, negated x, um, joined, negated y, when we do the Morgan's Law, this negation applies here and here, that's where we get the non-negated versions, and this becomes disjunction, and we know that disjunction is addition, so we end up with x destroyed with y, or also known as x org with y. Essentially, this gives us the gist of how to create or with just NAND because, well, we know we've made NOT gates from NAND gates, and we have a NAND gate here, so now we have the idea of negation from NOT, we have multiplication from the previous AND we made, and now we have addition from the OR we just made. So using nothing but NAND gates, we were able to create complement, multiplication, and addition, which gives us all the actual operations needed to create disjunctive normal form operations, which we know can also create any form of a Boolean expression Therefore, all of this and every other form of Boolean expression can be generated using nothing but NAND gates and also NOR gates. But the whole gist is yes, we can have some operation that is completely function complete by itself and make as many circuit diagrams as we want using that. So, with all that being said, that is the general gist 
of how circuits and logic gates work. So on an actual long example of that, take a look here. We have some actual breadboard with a circuit wired up. We just have some wires, some buttons here, some transistors, resistors, and an LED. So the real main part, let me take a look at this, of this light. So this circuit right here is NAND. We can view our two inputs based on these buttons. Currently, they're zero. So we have zero NAND with zero right now, which is why the light is turning on. It's going to turn on if it's true. So if we say zero NAND with one, like so, it's still on because it would still be one. And we do one NAND with zero, then it still be on. However, if we do both of them at the same time, all of a sudden it turns off. And that is because it is doing one NAND one, which would be one times one, the negation. So one times one is going to be one, negate that we get zero, hence the LED is off. The moment that we get a zero back in, it comes back on. Well, that's not too bad. And I mean, generally, yeah, we can do that with breadboard. Is that viable? Is that at all relevant? Well, to a degree, yes, because since we have a NAND gate here, we can create anything from that. So let's make some NOT gates. Let's make some AND gates, some OR gates for that logic. Let's go beyond that, create some multiplexers, some demultiplexers, make an entire functioning arithmetic logic unit. And we can make an actual CPU, throw some RAM together. And all of a sudden we have a fully functional system. And it's like, well, I mean, that's still a breadboard. Is a breadboard really that useful? It's pretty much used for prototyping. True. Well, let's take the exact schematic we have and print that out onto something like a PCB or something. And all of a sudden now you have custom printed uh, circuit diagram that you can do whatever you want with. So yeah, if you have the actual basic logic and understanding of how Boolean logic works in terms of logic gates, then yeah, you can make basically anything you want, have it printed out and make your own custom circuitry, whatever you want. So the sky's your limit. Now, all being said, do I expect anybody to do that? Some people, yeah, I do it, but I actually enjoy doing it. So if you don't enjoy doing it, by all means, uh, leave hardware to people that actually do enjoy it, but I digress. That's going to wrap up Boolean Algebra, and throughout all the videos, I do hope that you actually did learn something, hope this was useful, and I'll see you guys in the next topic.